Welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to Denunga, Papua New Guinea. Uh, we're here at a 398 meter airstrip and heading back to Goroka. So let's go ahead and get started. Motors on, fuel pump on, low start. It's over 14%. I'll flip on my fuel just because I'm on a side slope and I don't want all my fuel draining to my other side. Introduce my fuel over 14%. And it's coming up nicely today. And TOS system test, okay. At 673. All right, generator on, prop forward, our V2 on. Once our amps start coming back down, we'll throw our alternator on and our aux bus. Our fuel caps and selectors are good. I'll turn Betty off for this one. Takeoff, we're going back at 10,000 feet. We've got 553 kgs on board today. We got that all set into our our load calculator. The two seats off, 553 kgs, 550 pounds of fuel. So the number I put in is 1160. And it's 6370 and it says 6370, so we're good there. All right, so we're here in Papua New Guinea, right above Australia, with the blue dot. And we are heading back on over to Garoka. It's a half hour flight over there, so no dramas today. Let me get uh, lined up so my fuel isn't draining. Yeah, this is a 10% slope, pretty decent sized hill. Actually, I think it's probably about 14% for the first half, but because the bottom is kind of flat and goes back up a hill, it evens itself out at 10%. Was the 8819 or November Tango Kilo Taxi? November Tango Kilo. Was the November Tango Kilo Taxi Denungit Garoka 1 POB? Was the 8861 November Tango Kilo Taxi Denungit Garoka 1 POB? November Tango Kilo Morfino reported traffic. November Tango Kilo. All stations did not get one to three decimal nine or November Tango Kilo taxiing did not get Garoka will be on climb one zero thousand. All right, switches and instruments are good except for we got to get our weight sixty three seventy. So rotate fifty, yeah, rotate fifty nine, come back in at sixty nine if we had to come back in for any reason. Ups are set, indicated and verified at twenty. Our trim will set up for takeoff, and our abort is pretty much brakes release unless it's the first cone. Otherwise, we're continuing on. After takeoff, pitch for 85, consider EPL, consider feather. We'll go down the valley to the right, 80 full flaps close to the ground. Emergencies, masters, and crack my door. Red ignition, all of our lights are on, bypass. We are at 5,000 feet today, 24 degrees. 1380, 1330 for 1380. Condition condition flaps 20 fuel and harnesses, 1380, rotate 59. All right. Work is set. There's 50, 55, and there's airborne, barely. Climb on at 73 for a minute. Keep our ITT at 740. Around this, we've got a couple of anchors as well as just kind of turbulent air. So I'm just gonna get my nose back over and get up to 85. Looks like the valley is just absolutely stunning today. We have to go this way, a bunch of clouds here, but I think it's clear right behind me, so I'm just gonna go around this mountain and then start my climb up. Right over 85, we'll go zero to or 10 degrees of flaps, correction. And then over 90 and climb, we'll go zero and bring our prop back to 2,000 RPM. 
Once we've got settled in at around 100 knots, then we'll bring our ITT down to 720 for our climb. We're just going to do kind of a slow climb all the way around here, right at our best rate of climb. At 100 knots, and we'll go ahead and call up for our search and rescue. Morsby 8861, November Tango, Kilo, departure. November Tango Kilo departed to Nungit, time 42. We'll be tracking 268 on climb 10,000. Estimating Garoka 14. November Tango Kilo, take an estimate Garoka. Estimate Garoka time 14. November Tango Kilo. Papa Hotel, Papa Girl Helicopter, unreported arrival. And good stop. Time 2200. Confirm Papa Hotel Papa at GUSAP, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, stand by. They're wanting me to check to see if a helicopter has landed at GUSAP because I'm going to be going right over top of it. All right, it looks like these clouds are a lot higher than I thought, so let me make another turn. I'm a single kilo correction. Papa Hotel Papa was at Kumian Mine operating not above 9,000 unreported arrival. All right, I'm not sure where that is, but I'll go ahead and give them a try on 123.9 or November Kilo. November Tango Kilo, Roger. Papa Hotel Papa, November Tango Kilo, 123.9. Papa Hotel Papa, November Tango Kilo, 123.9. Morsby at 861, November Tango Kilo, no contact, Papa Hotel Papa. November Tango Kilo, Roger Manifest. All stations to Nungit, November Tango Kilo departed to Nungit for Garoka, passing 8,000 on climb, amended 1, 2,000, all stations to Nungit. All right, more than likely, I'm going to have to go to at least 12,000, potentially 14,000 to get over top of these clouds, because the ridges are 9,000, and they're a few feet higher than that. I thought it was a little bit more clear over here, but I think it's filled in since. There's a plane that wrecked over here, going through that pass over there on a really crappy weather day, I believe. And um, really unfortunate story because the pilot, he lived through the wreck, but he was pinned in his airplane because of his load had come loose. Not sure if it wasn't tied down correctly. I don't actually know all those details. I just know that he was pinned in his airplane and was able to get some phone calls out and whatnot. So on this flight back, because I'm also flying coffee here and underneath as well, I was just going to talk to you guys about our procedures for tying down our cargo because there was actually a Kodiak that just wrecked down in Guatemala just recently. And I don't know, I'm speculating here. Maybe that's not good. <laughs> I'm assuming, you know what that happens. But anyways, um, just from the pictures that I've seen, it looked like the load wasn't properly towed, um, tied down. And after takeoff, what had happened is the pilot lost control, the plane crashed and he perished. So I just wanted to take today and talk about our procedures on how we tie things down um, so that we know that we're safe if we were in an accident. Um, we don't want our load to be coming forward and either killing us, because we've got 400 kgs right there, probably 900, close to 900 pounds of, of cargo. Um, yeah, so anyways, once we get up over top of these clouds, we'll go over that. All right, just passing 10,000 almost now. It looks like just over 10,000, maybe 10 to five will actually get me through this, so that's good. Actually, it looks more like 12,000. I could probably get through there. I know I can get right through there. That's just in the wrong direction. So we'll just continue on up to 12,000. Then I can squeak over top and then head back down to 10,000. 
So yeah, I wanted to cover what we do for our tie-down procedures for securing our cargo. And this is something that I think that even if you're in general aviation, you fly around with your family and stuff, I think this is something that you need to be aware of, of your own aircraft and how you tie things down to make sure that you are safe. I mean, nobody really thinks that much about if they're in the case of an accident, but even if they were in the case of just an aborted takeoff, they, had, they went off the runway or whatever else, or they had a flat tire on landing and pulled them off. It's good to be thinking, what is what is all my cargo going to do in the case of an accident or incident? So our, our tracks that we have, that our seat tracks go into, each one of these little mounting points um, is rated for 100 pounds. So for our sake, because we use everything in kgs, that's roughly, roughly 50 kgs. November Tango Kilo, go ahead. November Tango Kilo traffic, Alpha Tango, Romeo HR 760, Patit 4, Medang. Turn climb to 16,000. Estimating Muki get 55 and Oakdog 5 Nana. Copy Alpha Tango Romeo, and November Tango Kilo is amended to 12,000 um, for the next 0, 05 minutes to build up. November Tango Kilo, confirm 12,000. Affirmative, November Kilo. November Tango Kilo. All right, so Alpha Tango Romeo just departed out of NADZAP down from a dang. My autopilot on for a second. So he departed out of here, he's flying down here, so he's gonna be going that track right there just to give you an idea where they're going. Anyways, like I was saying, each one of our tie-down points is rated for 100 pounds or right around 50 kgs. Or it'd be 46 kgs if you really ain't all about it. But anyways, um, so yeah, basically what we have is our kg. So that's roughly around 400 kgs. Uh, actually, no, it's not. That is one, two, three, four, five, six. Figure that out, what would that be? We got six bags of coffee, roughly around 50 kgs each. That's around 300, and then I've got maybe another 50 kgs with that. So that's 350, so we'll just divide that by 50. So I need at least seven tie-down points for that load. And right now, I've got eight tie-down points for it. So that's how we know that we have enough ropes for it, um, for each one of our loads. Oh, two, I mean, if you were in an accident, you've got your G-loads and stuff like that, you've got that to account for, but honestly, if they're rated for that amount, then that's what they're supposed to be rated for in the case of an accident, but who knows? That's what the Kodiak um, airplane flight manual suggests or recommends or determines what those are actually rated for. It looks like I'm just gonna have to stay at 12,000. I'm at 12.3 right now, heading back down to 12. Now that we're over top of this ridge, turn our taws back on because there isn't any mountains close by. Actually, there is some right down here and, and Betty might yell at us. Our GPS thinks that these mountains in front of us are a little bit higher than they are. So a lot of times she'll say, hey, train ahead, train ahead, even though it's well, well underneath of where I am. But another thing that we do as well is we run our weight and balance. Uh, we're required to have a weight and balance check on every single one of our flights. And so let me show you how we would do that. We have the Aviation Weight Balance app. I think it's like five bucks a year or something if you just have one airplane. We have a few, so we have, I think, 15 bucks a month. And no, I'm not sponsored by them. It's just the app that we use. So we're in Kilo today. Um, and I am, with all my gear today, I got my cameras and whatnot with me, so I'm right around 90 kgs. And I've got my seats on board for row two, but I've taken my seats out of row three, row four, and row five. So that's why I have minus 26 back here. So my front pod, um, we've got about 100 kgs underneath that one, as well as 100 kgs in the second pod. Our zone two, which is this zone right here, right behind me. I don't have anything there, it's just two seats, so that's just gonna be left empty. And we said we had 350 kgs right behind all of that. So 350, and it's spread out between two zones. So we're gonna divide that by two. So 175 per zone. Oh yeah, there we go. 
in the aft cargo shelf has four seats on board, uh, those four seats I took out, so there we go. And then I had 500, I took off with 550 pounds of fuel. You can see in my envelope here, um, it's still well within. It's Terrain more, ahead, terrain ahead. You know what I mean? And they're, they're not anywhere near, I mean, they're well, well under a thousand feet below me, but it thinks that they're higher. Uh, you can see, yeah, see, it looks like I'm going to hit a mountain, but there's, yeah, no mountains. Anyway, so yeah, I'm a little bit more towards the aft of the envelope, but I prefer that way, actually, uh, just because it's easier to rotate, it's easier to flare. If you have a lot, a lot of weight up towards the front of the Kodiak, it just is a lot heavier on the controls for takeoff, for landing, so I prefer it to be more towards the rear. Anyways, that's how we do our weight balance on every single one of our flights. It's crazy how much clouds have come into the Ramu Valley. That's what this valley is right here. It goes, uh, yeah, down pretty much all of this area right here. And Lay is down in this area. Actually, Lay is down here, but Nadzab Airport is right in that area. So, yeah, I mean, we've got clouds uh, as far as I can see. Looks like about that section here has just filled in with clouds since I left Garoka this morning. So, uh, Tengo Kilo Moti. No, but Tengo Kilo, go ahead. Tengo Kilo, confirm at Met Garoka. Estimating Groka time, 1-5. November Tango Kilo. Tango Kilo, Roger. No, reported traffic, 1-5 miles. Contact Groka Town, 1188, small, 7. Traffic contact, Tower 1-5, no, November Tango Kilo. When I was out at Denungas this morning, I shot an on-the-ground video. So if you guys are interested in checking that um, on-the-ground content out, check out my Patreon page down below. I like to do little videos on where I go and just maybe share a little bit about the community and walk around, throw my drone up to give you a little bit better of a picture of what it looks like on the ground. It's it's one thing seeing you take off or land, but it's another thing just walking around and kind of seeing like the houses that they live in there and a little bit about the airstrip or some um, different hard things about landing at these specific places or things that are easy and whatnot. So anyways, yeah, check out the link below if you are interested in seeing Denungit on the ground. All right, we'll go ahead and continue on our way down to 10,000 feet. More than likely, just with all the clouds here, they filled in pretty good. I mean, it's only 10 in the morning right now, but they filled in pretty good. But you can see just the mountains just peeking through the clouds down there. That's Mount Helwig. That's right down at the Bennett Gap, I believe. Um, so let me see. So that is right in this area. That's Mount Helwig. So my plan is probably to go there, probably find a little gap to go in there and then over to Garoka, because this whole mountain range right here looks like it's fairly thick of clouds. I'm sure that there's probably a couple of little holes as I get closer, because it always seems that there is. That's the way mountain gaps work, is that's usually where the breaks are in the clouds. So, like when I very first started flying here years ago, like all these clouds, they would stress me out because you're like, crap, I don't know if there's a way to get through. Like, they, they look pretty, like packed in there and filled in. Yeah, even though it looks like it's completely packed in there, never to get yourself stressed out until you get there and realize that there is nothing. So you just continue on knowing that probably nine times out of 10, there will be a way to get through the clouds. Even if it's in the afternoon and raining and crap, there's almost always at least one gap to help you get through to wherever you need to go. All right, that chimes let me know I've got 200 feet more to go to get to 10,000, so I just want to verify on my autopilot that my altitude select is hit and vertical speed, so it's going to continue down and then capture that. And you can see this little alt up here. It means that it is on basically on standby. The VS is green, so that means that's active coming down. And this is, will go green once I level off at 10,000. Go Romeo. There, now it just turned green and our vertical speed went away because now that we're leveled off at 10,000. All right, so like I said, I'm planning on coming here to Benna, jumping in here and then coming around because there's mountains all right here that I'll go up to 11,000. So it's kind of a, a twist that will be coming in that way. 
I'm going to go ahead and start dropping on down to 9,000. Even though I don't see a way to get through quite yet, um, more than likely, I will see a way here in a minute. There's a hole right there through the dirty water. I could go through that way, but we'll just go up this way, and I'm almost positive there's going to be a hole through the Bennet Gap that we can get through. But as I'm coming up to this Bennett Gap, because there's a decent amount of clouds out right now, I can't quite see in. But my thinking is when I do come up to go through a pass, I'm always going to want to come up to it at like a 45 degree angle. And if it's really bad or if it's bad weather or whatnot, I actually slow down, put 20 degrees of flaps in. I'll actually slow down, put 20 degrees of flaps in and slow down to 85 knots or 80, 80, 85 knots so that I have lots more time to think and so that I'm not getting myself in a position now that I'm low, I'm slow, and I'm low to terrain too. So I'll never commit myself to go over a pass through a gap unless I know 100% that I can get through and that it's safe on the other side and I've got plenty of space to maneuver around. Looks like I could just climb back up to maybe uh, 10 or 10.5 to get through right there. Actually, probably just 10, I could probably cut through right there, but we're going to go up a little bit further just so I can show you guys what the Bennett Gap actually looks like and what I've been talking about. <laughs> yeah, I can actually go through at this altitude, it looks like, right straight across from me. So if for some reason this doesn't work, then we'll just come right back over here and pop through at 900,000. All right, so here's the Bennett Gap right here. My hotel for five more I was mistaken. That's Helwig. I thought this was Helwig, but that's Mount Auto. See, they all look kind of the same when you have clouds. So, like I said, this is uh, open, like I thought it was going to be. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start our descent down to basically 5,800 feet. That's where I want to enter into my base. Um, because I'll be coming in basically straight in as a base. All right, always nice and open through the morning. Good morning, Alpha November, Romeo is one five miles, what it's passing, one two thousand five hundred on climb flight level two three zero, sending the clearance for Port Moresby and on board two four, Moresby four eight. All right, so this is the Bennett Gap right here. Nice little hole to get on through. Then probably, uh, Maybe 500 feet below me or so is right where the tree line is. And we'll just fly on down the valley today. It's a nice day. There's barely any wind, so there's no power lines here across. Sink the, rate. Oh yes. Pull up. Across the valley, so that's always nice too. Sink rate. Pull up. I don't like when you go down over 2,000 feet per minute. Sink rate. Pull up. Sink rate. Yes, I hear you. Doesn't it sound like she's saying shink? Shink rate. And a couple of motorcycle rides up in this valley, up in these hills right here, there's a couple of trails that are just absolutely incredible views. Valley is always a really nice valley to fly up. Some really, really pretty views here in Papua New Guinea, but pretty much every valley is a really, really pretty view here in Papua New Guinea. So we'll basically have to wait until we get closer to Garoka. Let's just pop over top of this hill right here. Wait till we get closer to Garoka because of the mountains are so close, they're not going to be able to hear me. The transmission is not going to be able to go through the mountains very well. So once I get to be probably around six miles is where I can actually call him before he'll actually hear me. We're just eight miles now. Let's start up our checklist. Full selectors are good. Our TAWS is turned off. Our VREF will get in just one second. Um, we'll be landing at 6,200 pounds, so 68 for our V-Ref. And uh, report left base uh, traffic, November 10, Kilo, estimated Koroka time 14, but yet to report 15 miles inbound from Dinangi. Uh, copy, traffic inbound, uh, 251. One, we're checking up on left base, 1018. Yeah, that'll pass it. 
Oak Tower, November Tango, Kilo, seven miles to the Bennett Gap, 6,000, copy inbound, Sierra Delta Foxtrot, and uh, your circuit, 2 0. November Tango, Kilo, copy, 3 5 right, wind light and variable, QH 1018, report right base. 1018 and report right base, November Tango, Kilo, for 3 5 right. Sierra Delta, Foxtrot, traffic, November 10, Kilo. Hey, Sam, copy traffic, Sierra Delta, Foxtrot, November 2. Sierra Delta, Foxtrot. All right, under 140 with the engine inlet to bypass, our landing lights, Sierra Delta, Foxtrot's coming back from Caribou, I believe. Done a video going out there, it's a nice place. I used to go out there all the time with MAF and pick up peanuts and stuff, but beautiful, beautiful flight going out that way. All right, if we need any go around, power up, 20 degrees of flaps, pitch for 73, maneuvers required, and reset torque to 740 on the ITT. Our prop and our harness are done. And now we're into the Garoka Valley bumps. It's always, always bumpy. It doesn't have to be like three knots of wind and it will be bumpy in this valley. Garoka Tower, November Tango, Kilo, three mile right base, three five right. November Tango, Kilo, three five right, clear to left. Quarter land 35 right, no particular kilo. Alright, let's bring our power back. Looks like I'm just picking him up. Sierra Delta Fox Try is going through the call car now. Degrees of flaps. Morning, Ryan. Hey, morning. A little fast, but I'm at the altitude that I want, so I'm just gonna pull my power back, kind of level off, and start bleeding off my airspeed. 500. Hold in my altitude as much as I can. Do full flaps checklist is complete. And turning final. All right, 68 knots on final. Three knots of tailwind. And sinkers right over the road, always. Right there. Pull of hawks down in front of me and above me. so much guys for taking the time to watch uh, my video. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Sure to appreciate it. Share it with all your other friends if you like. And, uh, Consider subscribing if this is the kind of content you guys like. I put out a video on Wednesdays and on Saturdays as well. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch and welcome to Garoka. And shut down. All the lights are off. Ox bus generator alter. Alright guys, thanks again. You guys have a great one. See you next time.